It's a very good morning to former England striker Darren Bent. Morning. Good morning, morning Bentsy. Good morning, how are you doing? You right? How are you? And we're very good, Paul. Yeah, how are you? Good. How's things? Yeah, all good to be fair. All good. Uh, Champions League's back tonight, so looking forward Indeed. to watching that. I must say, when Darren Bent comes in the studio and he notices your sneakers, <laughs> that's what I'm going to call them. I'd normally say trainers, yeah. but sneakers. <laughs> sneakers. Um, you know, you've done a good job. He, he was like, oh, I like them. Yeah. My, <laughs> my Air Max on. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I okay. must admit, yeah. Natalie, I had you down as a trainers rather than sneakers. And, well, it's funny because he's You've Darren surprised Bent. me there. No, but you notice I said, <laughs> what are you, I'm Ali? saying sneakers. I'm trainers. trainers all day, mate. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> trainer. No, I'm old school. I'm trainers. Don't worry. I'm with you on that. But yes, what a week of football, Darren, we've got. We, we've spoken a little bit already about the job that Chelsea have mm. uh, to take on Real Madrid, which is live on Talk Sports. It's been billed as Mission Impossible as they look to overturn a 3-1 deficit at the Bernabeu tonight. They, they do have a bit of history, in all fairness, uh, of comebacks. 2012, they did it against Napoli. They were 3-1 down from the first leg, then one on to win 4-1 in the second albeit that was at Stamford Bridge then uh, two years later PSG 3-1 up in the first leg yes they did it 2-0 they won Chelsea uh, winning on away goals that time because there is no away Mm. goals now there's no Romelu Lukaku Uh, he hasn't travelled due to injury Timo Werner then is expected to feature for Thomas Tuchel's side Um, and, and comes into it with form having scored twice against Southampton at the weekend. What hope do you give Chelsea, Darren, of um, getting something out of this game? Well, I think they're more than capable of getting something out of the game. Um, I think with Thomas Tuchel and the way that they set up, they're going into this game with confidence, as you said, obviously blowing away Southampton, yeah. absolutely destroying them. Um, and, we, and we know they can do that. Like, like, I think they'll score against Real Madrid. I mean, I wouldn't say Real Madrid are... Uh, they got away with it at Stamford Bridge a little bit, scored two great goals with Benzema, and then the last one's just a mistake from the goalkeeper. And then when you look at the chances that Chelsea missed, mm. that's what to give them confidence because if they create them amount of opportunities again at the Bernabeu, I think they've got an opportunity of taking them. So, but it's about can they stop Real Madrid scoring? Now that might be difficult, but I'm not writing Chelsea off. Absolutely not. I mean, I'll go back to the game. At, I know again, I think it was 2012. Was it when they went to the New Camp? Ten men. Mm-hmm. They managed to get a result against Barcelona. So they can do it. We've seen them do it before. As I said, it's, it's still a, a massive task. Of course, Real Madrid are in great form at the minute. Um, I think they won again at the weekend. But for me, Chelsea, they should go into the game with confidence. No away goals as well. So I, th- I think they can. I think they can get something out of it. I was going to say, Benty, I, th- I agree with you. I think if they score first, they're in the right chance. Uh, and I know he didn't score at the weekend. I think they won 2 nothing. Getafe they beat, but and Benzema didn't score. But his his performance in the in the first leg was, was different class. And mm. I think, to have any chance you're going to have to keep him quiet obviously well they got on stuck by two incredible headers yeah. like he could have tried to do that yeah. and not, I mean probably he probably could do it but that they're not easy headers so Chelsea would look at the goals they conceded the last one could be avoidable because either Rudiger just takes him out or Mendy doesn't make the mistake mm. yeah. but, the, but the two first goals are just world class headers at times you just got to go what, what can you do about that there's nothing you could do so that's a little bit of confidence but for Chelsea going into this second leg they created that many good opportunities. You look at Lukaku's header, both of them, two good chances. Yep. They had opportunities. If they create them opportunities and they take them, certainly if they score first, there's no reason why they can't win this How game. How much of a blow is it, Benty, do you think Lukaku been out injured? Or is it a blow? I think it is a blow because I, I thought Chelsea's best period in the game was when he came on. He mm-hmm. came on for that 10 minutes, they were in Real Madrid's faces. He had the two headers, they were creating chances. It was high tempo. But it just hasn't gone well for him, has it? You'd have to say this season and then going into the second leg, getting injured, missing missing this tie. He's, he's got to rebuild. I don't want to see him at the end of the season. Do you know what I mean? Go, do you know what? No, enough's enough. I want to leave. I want to see him next season. Give it another go because I think he's a good player. He's a, he's a, he's a very, very good goal scorer. But don't, don't shirk away from the challenge. Just stay in next season and go again. Uh, in terms of Chelsea's season then, you know, mm. they're, they're still in the FA Cup. Obviously, yeah. they've got a semi-finals to come this weekend. Um, at one point, look, you go back to December, they were top of the league. It was all looking really good for them and then it sort of all fell away. If they end up, let's say they lose to Crystal Palace at the weekend um, and they obviously get knocked out, what would that mean for a season for Thomas Tuchel? How would we be viewing him, Darren, do you think? Yeah, he'd probably look at it as a disappointment, getting to the League Cup final against Liverpool. Probably should have won that game. Again, had opportunity to didn't take him ultimately end up losing uh, you should go out the Champions League they're, not, they're obviously not going to win the league now for whatever reason they don't win the FA Cup I mean listen they're still, they were as you, we've just said there they've been in all the, the, the competitions they've been found on stages other competitions but for Thomas Tuchel listen if it, I think he's the most important piece at Chelsea 
I really do. Yeah. And I think if he was to ever become available, whew, there'd be a long host of takers, I'm mm. telling you. So, and we don't know what's going to happen at Chelsea because with Roman Abramovich no longer being there, is the days of them sacking managers after eight months, nine months mm. still going to be a thing? We, we don't know. So, first and foremost, Thomas Tuchel will be at Chelsea next season. He'll be disappointed. I think they'll, they'll finish inside the top four, that's for sure. But he'll look at his disappointment because they had an opportunity to win the League Cup if that doesn't happen. They are still in with a shout for the Champions League. They're in the FA Cup semi-final. So they lose that, yeah, it'd be disappointment. But I still think he's a top-class manager and if he'd become available, everybody would be up. Well, Manchester United for sure would be in for him. You'd have to think. Mm. I, I suppose the problem is when you're spending, what was it, 90-odd million on Romelu Lukaku yeah. and that hasn't quite worked out. Mm. Inevitably, there are going to be questions thrown at Thomas Tuchel. And, and you're right to suggest that actually with Roman Abramovich no longer in charge, maybe they're not going to have that trigger-happy mm. thing that they used to be like. And, and some, sometimes they would even win the Champions League and lose their job. We've seen that at the, in yeah. the past with, with Chelsea. Um, where do you see Lukaku's future then long-term? You say you think he should just mm. knuckle down and get on with yeah. it and be there second, for the next season. Is that something you expect will happen? Because obviously things just have not worked out for him. Unless Thomas Tuchel says that he's not in his plans at all for next season, and when you look at the way Thomas Tuchel plays, you'd have to say, mm, did he really fancy him in the first place? But listen, everybody would have said, when Chelsea last season, Werner missed that many chances, everyone would have said, all they need is a centre-forward to take him to the next mm -hmm. level. They go out and spend £90 million on one. That was brilliant last season. And everyone would have said, yeah. Even the way he started the season, yeah. people would have said, yes, they found it. And that's why everyone thought, I think he's going to win the league. It's been Lukaku's fault that it just hasn't worked out to some degree the service hasn't been right for him either but yeah I want to see him stay he did well at West Brom for that season he did well at Everton scored a lot of goals did well the first year at United fell off a little bit ended up leaving I want him to go to a big club in this country, like a top top tier club Champions League football and succeed and I think if he leaves at the end of this season I think the draw will be out on him I think a lot of people will say no didn't quite cut it at the very top end of the Premier League and I think he can do it but it's, it's, that comes down to him it just shows you, I mean, all, all, all signings are, are gambles. I mean, I think the vast majority, myself included, neither all of us would have thought right at, the, at that point what a signing Lukaku yeah. would be. Because what, you're absolutely right, Benton, we're saying, Werner, at that point, you know, he, he just couldn't have a barn door. He was going through and his finishing was really, really poor. So every day, myself included, thought it would be a brilliant signing. Well, you could point the finger at Guardiola for you know for Jack Grealish as well. That's an awful lot of money. All of a sudden, Jack's on the bench at the weekend. So, I'm, I'm, I definitely still think Jack Grealish is going to be a great player for Manchester City. I'm the same as you, Benty, in the terms of Lukaku. I hope he stays. Mm. I'm not so sure he will.